These daisies are um, well and truly over and I haven't trimmed them back, which I usually do, but it has been so damp that the seed heads are germ, the seeds are germinating in the seed heads. So I could go and plant these in the soil somewhere and these would grow. Look at that. That is how wet we've been, that seed heads can, oh, look at the spider. It's making a little world there. So <laughs> that is how wet it's been here in Ireland, that the seeds can germinate in the seed heads on the standing plant. And it's all over them. It's not just one, it's all of them. I mean, look at this. This is prolific. I might have to go and chop these and plant them places. Yeah, you excited too. You found this very interesting too. Yeah, but absolutely fascinating. What you digging? What you digging? What you digging? Is there anything in there? Yes, yeah, silly puppers. <laughs> Inca seems to think there's something in there worth digging. It's probably a um, white-toothed um, shrew, which is an invasive species. And they're very, um, they're all over the place. And the dogs and the cats and the chickens are all kind of catching and eating them. Anyway, what I was going to talk about is beech trees. Here, this mature beech tree here. This is a baby beech tree, which luckily took seed and has been growing for a number of years. When this huge beech tree came down in a storm, there was a big wind. And you can see right here that uh, this is another beech tree. So there was a line of beech trees that came around here, going up into our yard. You can see where the dogs are digging. So what happens is, as that beech tree trunk and root structure rots, this is the honey fungus that is eating the roots. But what I always love are also the dead man fingers. Look at that. The dead man fingers is uh, growing in there as well. So, oh look, you're stepping on some of them, Inca. Yes, the dead man's fingers, they're called. And they look like dead man's fingers coming out of the ground. They're very small, as you can see, Inca's big. Inca thinks there's another shrew in there. But they're beautiful little fungus that grows on uh, rotting wood. The only thing you have to be careful of is you don't want the honey fungus or honey mushroom or whatever you want to call it. It's got a lot of different names to invade the space of the next tree over. So I have to keep an eye out. That is probably the root of this tree. And I'm hoping that this, because they can start attacking a living, healthy tree. So you have to be really careful. So I have to keep a real close eye that this doesn't spread onto the other tree. What is it? Is there something in there? Is there something in there? What's in there? You're gonna step all over my beautiful dead man's fingers. You can see how small they are next to Java and his tiny toes. Anyway, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully these mushrooms will only be on the dead stuff. Here you can see this is a different one. Can you move a sec? Uh, there, that's another. Um, I can't think off the top of my head what this one is, but they're very solid. Um, and that's another one, a uh, sign of rotting decaying wood. Fungi are amazing, aren't they? Clever pup. But so glad this baby beech tree is here and hopefully it will, um, hopefully it will not be affected and continue growing. Because when they took the trees down, I told the tree surgeons to be very careful of my baby. And it's doing really well. It's beginning to get its beautiful autumn color. This fence we've put up here over the last few days 
because I'm going to put the rams in here to graze. Uh, nothing's been grazing here for uh, years and years and years. And there's a line there that is full of ivy. And I want them to eat the ivy out because it thickens that stand of trees to the point where on the other side, if, if the wind catches that and blows them into the other stand of trees on the other side, it'll be years of uh, young trees kind of set back. So I am kind of want to de-ivy a bit. Now, we have plenty of ivy here, so it's not like I'm damaging wildlife food. Anyway, the sheep will be healthy from it. Here's the horse chestnuts are turning as well. Everything's turning. And the rain has started falling. It's raining and the doves have decided to come down finally and feed. They weren't coming down earlier. And now that it's raining, they came down to feed. Oh, you're bold. They were having a lovely time eating. Jarvis found a huge stick. Isn't that a big stick? It fell out of the wheelbarrow when I was bringing firewood in. Is it a good big stick for little puppies? It's almost as big as you, if not the same size. <laughs> Can I bring that inside? Can I bring that inside? Java, I know you want to chew it. I'll bring it inside and then you can <laughs> chew it. Come on, let's take it inside. You coming? Come on. Come on, Java. You can chew it inside the house. Come on. Come on, Java. You can have your stick inside. Come on. Good boy. Java. There you go. That's your stick. Now you can chew it happily. Yes. In the dry. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. This area has been fenced off. I've done the prep work. I'm hoping the rams are going to cross the laneway into here, easy peasy pie. They've got loads of ivy to eat all in this fence row. So there's loads of snowdrops that my grandparents uh, planted in cyclamen and I see them struggling and they're great for spring pollinators. So that's why I want the sheep to clean up that hedgerow. So you can see it, what it's like now, with all the ivy climbing up the trees. Do you see? And that big, huge beech tree has a lot of ivy up it. So it shades out the plantation of trees on the other side, the ivy does in the winter. So taking the ivy off will allow more light through and the understory will have more um, diversity because at the moment it doesn't. And I know there's snowdrops struggle, struggle up and uh, cyclamen. Look at these, they're all having a lovely time because I'm chatting away. Okay, now, fingers crossed, the boys will follow me into here. Hey boys. Come on boys. Yeah. Oh, 
last the handle fell off. That's just what I don't need at the wrong moment. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, you three. Ah, oh, bugger. The thing broke again. Now, you're just crowding me. Boom. Well done. There we go. Now, hopefully, they will do a really good job of grazing the diversity in there. Oh, there's a lot of plant uh, and plant diversity in there. There's also loads in this area, loads of anthills. But there's also, in the spring, there's snowdrops and daffodils. So they're gonna have a lovely time munching through this, I hope. And all that ivy. Great stuff. So ooh, something that I don't like is when the water is just in a couple of areas. I like it to be spread out. Uh, I like it to be spread out over a broader area. And at the moment, it's just going down one section and flattening one section of the grass down. So, if I open this gate, I think there's a buildup. Yep, there's a buildup of water right there, which is bringing it this way and not spreading it out across the area. You can see there's a bit of spreading out there, but I want it more broadly spread out. So I'm doing the fences of the horses. So let's see. I've got to move some of this stuff out of the way. So that I can uh, open the gate and now if I open this gate that might release that. Nope. It's really, it's way above the, uh, you can see there's the cement under there. That's three or four inches. So, puppy's roaring. So this, if I dig this up as well, oh look, oh. okay, that is going to spread that out much wider. So when it spreads out, it's less of a wash. But this was uh, definitely a buildup of stuff. That was damming it up. There we go. That's much better. Now, see if I can, there's a bit of wood there. There we go. Now, we're diversifying. So you can see I've already widened it out. So there isn't too much on one side. <laughs> Dogs are having a lovely time. So that was a good thing to do. I'm gonna do a bit more walk on this without the phone, without filming. 
because you can see there's something blocked up here. Creating a bit of a fountain and with time that'll build up and dam. There we go. So it's always trying to, here, I don't want the water to go on either side, but I want it to spread out there because it's better, healthier for the land to have the water spread out. Okay, I better do this with both hands and without videoing myself. So it's all running smoothly now. And my little dam to slow the water, because it, because it's got such a clean path here, it goes really fast. So I've put rocks in here to slightly dam it up. And then that big rock divides the water. Some of it meets in the middle, but it's spreading out the amount of wash across the land. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to siphon it one place so that it's quicker and more direct to the river and flooding, etc. It's The point is to slow the water down. And this is on a small scale. So, this is dammed here. I've been doing this for years. So when that stone I just pulled out from somewhere else and made it so it separates it and slows it down so that it doesn't wash the land away, but spreads out to go with the land and slowly down towards the river. It just slows the flooding down, less of a direct route. And you're loving all this water, aren't you? You are absolutely thriving in it. I don't know where all the other dogs are. They stop playing with you because you keep playing in the water. Ah, Java, no. I don't think the boys are happy with their tiny paddock. It's not very big. It's about a quarter of an acre, but there's lots to, lots to eat. Excuse me, Java. No, you be quiet. You do not bark unnecessarily. Okay, you good boy. Yes. Well, there we go. They're eating the ivy now. That's the job. And a bit of the roses. The dog roses are being eaten and ivy. There's also lots of grass in there. Dandelions. There's uh, cow parsley. All kinds of things in there. So they've got a good diverse stuff, amount of stuff to eat in there. Look, the lamb's chewing the ivy off of that cherry trunk. We stop now. Look, eating the ivy. Horse parsley. <laughs> you got told, didn't you? And they can also browse the cherry leaves. I've got plenty to eat in there. You guys are complaining for no reason. There's lots to eat in there. A wonderful diversity of veggies. Oh, I can smell. One of them has found the um, chives, the wild chives. I can smell the, uh, the garlicky smell or the oniony smell. <laughs> Excellent. Excuse me. Excuse me, Inca. Come on, leave it. Yes, I'm talking to you. You'll lead your puppy astray. And he's trying to behave and be good, isn't he? And you're always looking for attention. Yes, yes. Now we gotta go let the horses out because I've just finished doing their fencing. Oh, look at the mess you've made. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys out. You can go for a gallop and a graze for a little while. Pulling all that good hay out. they go. And you guys are fine. I'm going to come back up and put this good hay in that trough there because that is good hay. I hate how the horses do that. What a waste. 